Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about distributed forces. So a distributed force is any force where the point of application is spread out over an area or a volume. Uh, so distributed forces are represented by a field of vectors, uh, and the forces are still going to have a magnitude, a direction, uh, and a point of application, which uh, really now is an area or a, a volume of application. Uh, so over here is an example of a visual representation uh, of a uh, distributed force. And this is an example of a uh, field of vectors. Uh, it's a number of arrows that are kind of connected uh, on the back end uh, by a common function. So this is a bunch of vectors distributed over an area. All right, so distributed forces can be further broken down into surface forces and body forces. So a surface force is understandably a force distributed over a surface. Uh, and for something like that, we can think about water pressure. So the water pressure uh, on the Hoover Dam over here uh, is going to be the, an example of a surface force. The water is press pressing against the surface of the dam. A body force, on the other hand, is di distributed over a whole volume. Uh, so the most common example of body force uh, is actually the gravitational force. Uh, so if you look at uh, gravity, it's not actually a point force at the center of mass. It's actually going to be distributed every bit of the material uh, is getting pulled down by gravity. So it is distributed over the entire volume uh, of this plane. All right, so surface forces. Talking about that first. Uh, so we can have a, uh, a long single, uh, we can have this acting along a single dimension. Um, so sometimes I'll have a beam and it's got, you know, so much weight per um, meter of beam. Uh, so we might talk about this as a surface force. Uh, or we can have it distributed, uh, kind of in its true form, distributed along a, uh, a surface. So if you've got, you know, 60 pounds per square inch of pressure uh, on this plate, uh, that would be a surface force. So the units for uh, the magnitude are going to be given in terms of a uh, force per distance or for force per distance squared. Uh, so 5 kilonewtons per meter uh, over here is an example of the units, and then 60 pounds per square inch uh, over here. So a surface force, particularly the 2D surface force, uh, we can also think about this as a pressure. Uh, and so the units for pressure and the units for the surface force are the same, and really uh, water pressure is an example of something that is both of these things. All right, so body forces, on the other hand, uh, it's a force distributed over a volume. Uh, and these are usually not drawn as a field of vectors because the diagrams become too overwhelming. So you can't draw an arrow on every bit of a volume. Uh, otherwise, you just have a bunch of arrows kind of floating around in space. Um, so we usually don't draw these. Um, but gravity, like we talked about before, is an example uh, of a body force. So every bit of material in this plane is being pulled down by gravity. Uh, so each little bit has its own little bit of gravity force. Uh, another common body force is a magnetic force. Uh, so in this maglev train, the magnetic force uh, is actually distributed over kind of the volume of the electromagnets uh, in this particular situation. So we can also have kind of differing uh, intensities. So it's not the same amount of force. Here we've got a cross section of a bone uh, showing different densities. And so something like a gravity force, if a object is more dense, uh, it's going to have more gravity force pulling on it. If a, if a part of a body is less dense, uh, it's going to have less gravity pulling on it. Uh, so they aren't necessarily evenly distributed over the entire volume. So the units for these are going to be given as a, uh, a unit force per distance cubed, uh, so, man, so many pounds per cubic inch, uh, or so many newtons per cubic meter uh, would be examples of units. Uh, and the gravitational uh, body force, uh, particularly for the, you know, for uh, a body force and particularly a gravitational body force can be thought of as like the weight due to object density. Uh, so this is a force, not a mass per cubic uh, volume, but the weight, uh, so, many, so many pounds per cubic inch uh, is going to be similar to the, the concept of density uh, in this case. All right, so distributed forces and their equivalent point load. So distributed forces are difficult to deal with directly in equilibrium equations. Um, so because of this, we're usually going to convert this distributed forces into the equivalent point load. 
Uh, the equivalent point load is a point force that will cause the same accelerations uh, or cause the same reaction forces as the original distributed force. Uh, and there can be more details on the process of going from a distributed force to the equivalent point load uh, on a future page. All right, so that is all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.